and welcome back to another episode of fat man food reviews i think it's episode four or so right now unless we found something to kind of throw in between the apples um still haven't figured out a better name but today we have two more apples surprise surprise we have the macintosh which you should easily be able to see and the granny smith which should be invisible <laughs> I grew up, which I'm sure most of you did, eating Macintosh apples. I have very, very vivid memories about coming home from daycare, sitting down in front of the TV, watching Gola Gola Island, and my mom cutting up a Macintosh apple and putting peanut butter on the slices. That right there is like peak life. You know, shit, you know, maybe some Barney might have made it a little better. You know, this is back in the early 90s, okay? Yeah, I want to eat, eat, eat my apples and bananas, all right? I always I grew up with Macintoshes, so that to me is like what an apple is. Funny enough, my last name is Smith, uh, and obviously I had a Granny Smith, so there was always this weird expectation to like Granny Smith apples or eat Granny Smith apples. Don't really know why. Uh, maybe because the last name dumbass, but I've always disliked granny Smith apples I'm not a fan of that like sour bitter apple flavor now if it's like in a candy and it's more of an artificial uh, Sour apple that's a bit different This is gonna be and I promise you the last video about apples. I swear to God we're running out of apples We will do something else next time. Let's crack straight into it now we have the Macintosh. It's kind of a larger apple. It's similar to the shape of a Fuji apple in that it's short and very fat. It's a very, very hearty apple. I mean, it fills up your entire hand. It's a handful of an apple. It's very smooth skin. It's a very beautiful apple, very deep red. So let's crack straight into it. Couple things you notice from the first bite, very crunchy skin. A little thicker than most apples so there's a nice pop when you penetrate it it is a juicier apple one thing about macintosh is compared to like ambrosia apples honey crisp etc is that macintoshes tend to have a a millier like sandier type of texture to the flesh of the apple if you eat them fresh it's not a bad thing it's a different texture but for me macintoshes have a shorter shelf life than most apples a good complex flavor and that it both has sweet notes a good complex flavor and that it both has a nice sweet note with a little bit more of a, a sour bitter complexity underneath it the skin does have its own distinct flavor it gives it more of like a plant-like essence in your mouth and nasal cavity when you kind of so let's get another bite Again, a very juicy apple. It's not the juiciest. It's not in the top two or three juiciest, but a juicy apple is always a good thing to have. And due to the milliness of the flesh, when you take a bite, you always end up with peel in your mouth at the end. And like I said, if you like the taste, it's not a bad thing, but that is an issue with what you will have with Macintoshes. Again, it has a very unique, deep flavor. It's not really comparable flavor-wise to any of the apples we've tasted before because those tend to be sour or sweet, bitter or sweet. This has got a nice complexity of, of, of a real initial hit of sweetness with just a tiny little twink of bitterness at the end, which really works well together. As I said earlier, I ate these a lot as a child, so it's a very nostalgic apple for me, you yeah. know? But as you can see, there's not much left. And that goes back to one of our most important points when it comes to an apple. The apple to core ratio. 
and as you can see above me here we've got a and as you see now we had a large handful size apple so it's a pretty good apple to core ratio like i said the skin is a little on the thick side it, it's not hard or abrasive it's not a bad tasting skin but as you bite and chew the apple you will constantly be left with skin in your mouth it's not an overpowering flavor but every time you take a bite you will end up with peel left over in your mouth it's a good apple i'd recommend it they're one of the cheaper varieties they don't hold up that well these apples in fact i think it was less than a week i had them before they started to show bruising and a little bit of turning soft and starting to go down that hill so macintoshes are good if you plan on eating them you get like a three pound bag where they're so large you only get like six so if you eat like one a day you should be perfectly fine and we know what they say about an apple a day I'm, no i'm not gonna say it i'm not gonna say it i'm not gonna fucking say it dude i'm not gonna say it and now to the granny smith ah uh, yes you can't see this apple but you can see these around me so So right off the bat, very firm, very crisp, very sturdy apple. It seems like the insides are much firmer, denser than that of a Macintosh. Seems like the apple itself would hold up much longer, have a longer shelf life. I will say these Granny Smith apples are nowhere near as bitter and sour as ones I've had in the past. This particular apple actually is one of the better Granny Smiths I've had. still just an odd tasting apple you taste more of the essence of the apple that plant essence i've mentioned a couple times it's very aromatic other than that like initial bitterness sourness the flavor there's a peak of the sourness and then it just drops off and what it leaves you with the peel and the peel again tastes not bad it's definitely not more overpowering than the apple itself but it's not necessarily the most pleasant of taste we'll say very juicy apple nonetheless the macintosh and other apples we've tasted are juicier but the juice is very noticeable with this apple now, the peel isn't bad it's not overpowering but it does have a strong plant like flavor to it it's like the chloroplast in the peel that you're able to taste again though not super sour not super bitter hitting the spot good can't complain it's much milder than i remember that's for sure as you can see there's not much left of the apple it's a smaller apple than the macintosh but the core of the two are about the same size so you have much less of a core to apple ratio or apple to core ratio with the granny smith but it is a nice apple to put in your pocket carry around it's really easy to fit in your lunchbox etc i guess it could be used as a good palate cleanser but other than that i'm not a fan of this the sour apples the bitter apples i will say this is probably one of the better granny smiths i've ever had it's not overly bitter overly sour if i'm going to eat a granny smith i would much prefer it be one like this very good shelf life very firm apples in comparison to the macintosh that were bought at the same time the uh, the granny smith showed a lot less wear and tear whereas the macintosh over the same amount of time started to show bruises started to become a little softer things like that overall i would have to say the granny smith is at the bottom of our list but it's ranked above the jazz apple i have to say the jazz apple has been the most disappointing as of yet uh so far still our favorite is the that motherfucking ambrosia son if you still haven't had an ambrosia apple motherfucker go get one go get one okay but hey if you guys like the video please feel free to leave some comments below let me know if you can 
figure out a better name for this shit or if you've got something that you think would be cool to uh to review but take it easy we're out of here thank you goodbye